happy 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 new year welcome back to my positive vibe journey with the girl joy b today i'll be discussing imposter syndrome bring any further let's do this like i said i'm going to be discussing imposter syndrome i'm going to insert a picture or a definition from google somewhere here yeah and also i'm going to try to explain it to the best level of my abilities but before that have you gotten yourself something to drink i'm having tea today <laughs> uh yeah so let's do this so what i understand by imposter syndrome is the psychological occurrence of you not only of you doubting your skills your talent your achievements no matter how many things you have achieved or what evidence is showing all your competence your skills your talent you still have hard time accepting you are capable of this thing for example if you are a good singer it's so hard for you to accept that you can sing or if for example you you are accomplish so much when it comes to your workplace you have a hard time accepting that you know what you're capable of doing this that's what i understand by imposter syndrome no matter all the evidence that is pointing to you you having the best skills you having the talent to do so or you having the skill sets you still doubt yourself that's what i understand by imposter syndrome don't you understand it what do you understand by it that you having um, doubts about your skills your ability your talent you also have this nagging fear of being a fraud like you are not who you are supposed to like you you fear you're going to be exposed like a fraud you fear like you're going to be exposed like you're not the one who is doing all this or the one achieving all this that's another thing that go hand in hand with being an imposter or all when you are suffering from an imposter syndrome there are types of imposter syndrome you can associate with one or several types of this imposter syndrome and i'll start with the first one the first one is the the, impo the perfectionist imposter syndrome may occur or may be triggered in those people who set high ex expectations of themselves and even even if they achieve 99 percent of what they set out to do that one percent will be very detrimental to them because they will be viewing everything else like a failure like it's so hard for them to accept a mistake has happened it's so hard for them to accept like i achieved all these but this one mistake it's not it's, it's part and parcel of the large picture of success so you see them focusing so much on the negative outcome of the whole thing even though it's the one percent than uh, focusing so much on their achievement so when you set your expectations so high that you it's crowd your judgment or it's crowd your vision of yourself and what you achieved that you focus in that one percent or two percent of the mistake you have done that you forget to see the 98 or 99 percent of what you have achieved that can trigger imposter syndrome and how do you deal with this um what to do when you fall under these categories that you learn to acknowledge mistakes except sometimes when you are doing something or when you want to achieve something mistakes about to happen and the best thing you can do from mistakes is learn from them and accept that they are part of the bigger picture of you achieving this big thing you are determined to do and also learning to celebrate the small milestones that you are making along the way this will enable you or this will refocus your focus from the mistakes and all things that are going wrong and uh, focus them on appreciating the small things you have done and uh, then you won't be so much focused into the negative part of the journey and you are going to learn to appreciate the journey so as much as you set high expectation of yourself also look back and uh, appreciate those small small steps and uh, also learn from the mistakes don't take them as 
uh, a reflection of your incompetence or a reflection of you not being able to do something. Just take them as lessons and part of the whole successful journey. So we go to the next. So the next is the genius imposter, the natural genius imposter syndrome. Well, who are those people who fall under this category? These are the people who find it hard to acknowledge that everything to be achieved, it's a journey, it's a process. You have to go through a process. Like you can't just wake up and be like, pop, you are a singer. Like you have to take your step, your time and learn and uh, this for natural uh, natural genius imposters if they start something and it doesn't ha happen like it doesn't come naturally to them they are going to remember it as can't do it and that's very dangerous because this can hinder you from so many things like if there is a job you're going to uh, apply for the moment you read that the the, the the qualifications and maybe you don't need one you'll be like huh there's no need to apply for this job because i don't have all the qualification and uh, this can hinder you from not being able to or you're going to miss a lot of opportunities because you're going to you're trying so much to make sure that the thing that you're good at or that you were going to rebel like you can do comes to you naturally and uh, what do you how do you deal with this when you fall under this category you have to to remember to remind yourself that we are all work in progress like we learn as we go like every successful person out there or a person who uh, achieved a certain project took their time they learned a lot along the way and uh, they appreciated the journey as much as they are appreciating the end result right now so you have to refocus your 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 inner you you have to refocus and see that as much as the end result is important the journey is as important and should be appreciated as much as the end result so we go to the next one we have the rugged individual imposter syndrome and this happens when those people who find it harder Workers always triggered by those people who find it hard to ask for help in the areas that they like they like need this help. They are those people who truly believe for a project to be really appreciated or for something to be really appreciated, it's done by them, it's accomplished by them. They have to do everything by themselves because every every they believe that if they get help from anybody this invalidate their skill set this makes them their contribution to the project invalid that they, they they see that the moment they receive help their own impact of the project or whatever they contributed to the project is so unimportant so they find it so 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 hard to ask for help they truly believe they have to do it by themselves no matter what it takes but um how do you deal with this start looking at those people you admire if you go a step further and ask or find out you're going to find out those people you admire most or those big projects you have seen done by people those people had help along the way it's it's it doesn't invalidate you contribution it doesn't invalidate your your skill set your ability to do something because you ask for help and you should also learn that uh, asking for help is not a sign of weakness it's just as a strong sign of strength we have the expert imposter syndrome this can be triggered in individual who spend most of their time researching uh, on ways they can improve their skill set, on how they can just grow their abilities and all that. And um, why is this, this dangerous? Is because uh, the moment you start researching, you be you you be researching and researching. You never f reach a point where you be like, you know what? I got all the skill set. I need to do something. So this may hinder you from even starting something because you're so focused in perfecting your your skill set 
affecting your abilities, affecting your um, your talent that you never start something. No? How to deal with this is that you you learn to recognize that you don't have to have the skills perfected. You can improvise as you go. Like you can try and work with what you have and uh, to see what you can come up with as you do this just start you don't have to have the perfect skills and also you have to learn that you can learn to perfect your skills in the minimum time possible and this will help to boost you you your confidence in your ability and your skill set so we go to the next one we have the superhero so for superhero imposter syndrome, these are those people who push themselves to work as harder than anybody, anybody else so that they don't or they are not identified as imposters. They push themselves so much. They work so hard. And uh, the thing is, they expect so much from themselves. And they expect from anybody else their expectation for themselves they are ridiculous ridiculously high than they expect from any person in their life and uh, this is can be detrimental to your mental health because it can lead to burnout emotional burnout because you're working yourself so 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 hard and uh, how do you deal with this the best way to deal with this is Try not to get validation for your self-worth from outside. Don't let people, de how they they tell you all um, the compliment they give you to be the building or the cornerstone of your self-worth. Make your self-worth from within yourself. And uh, another thing is uh, redefine your definition of success. Maybe by maybe trying new hobbies, trying new things so that you can uh, refocus your energy on other things and uh, reduce the amount of pressure you're putting on yourself in order to achieve your definition of success. That's all from Joy Day. Hope you have learned or you have gotten something from this. What type of imposter syndrome do you identify with? And uh, what are you going to do about it so that you can be a better person? With that, I hope you're going to like this video, share it if you find it helpful, and always leave a comment. I would love to interact with each and every one of you. And that's all I had for you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye. Ciao. Adios. Lots of love.